So this is a video about taking photos in AR mode with Pokemon Go. And the idea to make that video rose from watching the video from Pokemon Master Holly, where she described what what kind of motives would be cool for, for photos in uh, Pokemon Go. But I think there are some things that we have to consider that are even more important for for good quality photos like I mean what do we want from those photos we want them to look kind of realistic as if the Pokemon was really in the real world so there are some things that we have to consider when when trying to to do that and um, I want to talk about three points that I think are the most important uh, in that matter first the quality of the picture Second, the position of the Pokemon in the photo. And third, the lighting. Um, for the first one, and this is something that, I, that I'm gonna mention many times, I think, in the video, because it's important for, for all the points that I wanna make. <clears throat> um, what we all have to, to realize is that the AR we are talking about in Pokemon Go it's not the real AR that we know from the Microsoft demos, for example. The difference is that there is no virtual 3D environment in which the Pokémon can react with stuff in the real environment. But rather, it's just a picture of the Pokémon held in front of the camera lens. Like, it's just put in another picture. And that's a difference, because, for example, for the first point, for the quality of the picture, it means that the quality of the Pokémon is different than the quality of the picture itself. Because the Pokémon has always the same quality. It's, it's never blurred, for example. If you move your camera, you will get blurry pictures, but the Pokémon will never be blurry. So one thing you have to do is always hold the camera or the cell phone still. Don't move it too much, so you don't get blurry pictures, so you don't get a blurry background, that is, because the Pokemon won't be blurry. So it won't look as if it was fitting in that picture, as if it was really there. This is the same thing with the focus. The Pokemon is always in focus. So you have to make sure that the place where the Pokemon is positioned in the picture is always as well focused. And another important thing is, but I will come to that later in the third point again, the lighting, because bad lighting makes bad quality of the picture. The Pokemon will always have the same good quality and will not fit in that low quality picture because of the low lighting. Because the camera of the, of the phone has always the same settings. You can't just switch modes as if you were making any other photo, but in Pokemon Go you cannot change between modes, so it's always the same mode, and in that mode dark environments lower the quality of the picture. This is why you get the best pictures in good lighting and, and bright environments. And sometimes it's even enough to, to, to tilt the phone a little bit, to change the perspe perspective a little bit, because the cell phone tries to adapt to the brightness of, um, of, the, of the focus of the picture. So in summary, you have to make sure that the quality of the picture is as good as possible, because the quality of the Pokémon is always good and it doesn't fit if the quality is too different. Second, the position of the Pokémon in the picture. The position of the Pokémon in the picture doesn't only make the picture more interesting because you can put it on in, in, in funny places or something like that, but they also make the picture more realistic. And the one thing that is very important in that matter is the fact that the Pokémon is in this semi-AR mode, always in front of everything. It's not really in a 3D environment, so it will always be in front. 
So yeah, you gotta make, su make sure that there's no interference between the Pokemon and the background. In this example, you can see that the Pokemon is very badly positioned. Or on this one, where the Pokemon is under a chair. But the upper part of the Pokemon should be behind that chair, not in front of it. So it should rather look like this. But it never will, because it's not in a 3D environment. So since this is not possible with Pokemon Go, uh, we have to position the Pokemon in a way that it cannot interfere with the objects. So if you want to position it under something, like under a table, do it like this, for example. So keep in mind, you always have to be aware of the, how deep the Pokemon is positioned in the picture. Because everything that is behind the Pokemon must be even deeper in the picture, to be realistic. Another important part of the position of the Pokemon in the picture is the Pokemon is always standing flat on the ground. You can see that also in its shadow. There are no dents or corners in the shadow. It's always flat, which means you have to make sure that the Pokemon is positioned on a flat surface. Don't put it on some stuff that would normally make it raise a foot or something like that. This will never happen, it will always stand straight, so put it flat on some flat surface. The only exception here are flying or floating Pokemon, but even with those Pokemon you have to, to consider that they have a shadow. Like for example in, uh, in the video of Pokemon Master Holly, she made that Abra sit in, uh, in a hole in the wall. While Abra looked as if it was sitting there, there was always its shadow under the hole and thus makes it look unrealistic. So consider that. But there is a little trick with that. If you make the photo in a, in a dark environment, then the shadow will kind of disappear. You won't be able to see it anymore. This is just working with floating or flying Pokemon though. And the third point is the light. And the light is especially important because it has two factors. First, which I already said in the, in the first point, dark environment lowers the quality of the photo, which is always bad because the quality of the Pokemon stays the same. But we already had that. So the other important point is the Pokemon is always bright. It's, it's, it has always the same light on it, no matter in what environment you make the photo. So even in, in, in dark environments, the Pokemon will always look as if there was a light source shining on it. And if the surrounding of the Pokemon isn't, isn't bright as well, it will always look unrealistic, as if it just wouldn't fit there. So there are two things you can do about that. The first thing is you could um, you could change the lighting. It doesn't have to be completely bright, but the place where you put the Pokemon has to be bright because it has to look as if you had a light source like a flashlight or something and use it on the Pokemon. So the Pokemon, well it makes sense that it's bright because you shine on it with something, but that means that the light would also brighten the direct uh, surrounding of the Pokemon, like the ground it stands on. So this is a possible solution to that problem. And one way to evade that problem is something that you can do with flying or floating Pokemon. Because if you imagine you had a flashlight and you aim on the Pokemon with it, if the Pokemon is flying or floating, you will shine on the Pokemon, so you, the Pokemon will be brighter than the environment. And the environment wouldn't actually be any brighter, because there's nothing reflecting the light of your flashlight but the Pokemon. So it makes sense that the Pokemon in the air is a little brighter than the environment, because of the flashlight of your camera. But even, even that works best when the Pokemon is dark like this one. So if you consider all these three points, 
there's actually nothing more you can do wrong. You can just choose any like clever or funny motives uh, you can put your Pokemon in. Like this one, I really like that. That's my one of my favorites that I made because of the high voltage sign. For those who are not so firm with German. So with that said, have fun with taking pictures and um, well maybe even share some with us. Would be great to see what kind of funny pics you took. So thank you for watching and see you next time.